McGruber. Now, for those who don't know, for those who are, say, oh, under 35, uh, McGruber is a sketch from Saturday Night Live that was intended to parody MacGyver, which is a show from the 80s uh, that was kind of a sort of a, a television spy show that usually came on Monday evenings after Monday Night Football so that the guys, when they were all bored with you know the rest of the evening, they could watch this kind of a semi-spy show about a guy who takes bottle caps and makes bombs out of them and all, always gets the bad guy at the end of the show. So um, it's such a preposterous premise that Will Forte did a series of little itty-bitty sketches on Saturday Night Live called MacGruber. They're all the same. It's MacGruber's trying to dismantle a bomb, and he keeps getting distracted, and at the end of the sketch, the bomb blows up, and you laugh because it's so silly. It's the same thing over and over. Uh, like a lot of other Saturday Night Live sketches, they thought, we can take this very thin idea, and we can stretch this into a feature-length film. Sure, why not? It starts as three characters in a single room. We can make it 85 minutes long. Um, let's see how they do. Let's see a clip. Okay, now why don't you move down to the end of the counter for the stop, stop. McGruber. That's me. Now here is the most important thing. Listen carefully. With your left hand, lift the cup up to your mouth. Open your lips, then tilt the cup back until the liquid... Oh, no! Down, 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 down! Oh! Vicky? You're alive? Yeah, we're alive. We're coming over there. Meet us out in the alley. I'm okay. It's nice work with that Incredible Mop. Yeah, it would be a good commercial for their product. I'm not so sure that it would be. There it is, McGruber. Now, that, of course, is uh, Kristen Wiig in the uh, another Saturday Night Live. Uh, alum. Alum. A current. Actor current, yeah. Uh, and Ryan Felipe. That's right. Uh, the, uh, the star of the Oscar-winning crash. The horrible, lying, cheating ex-wife, ex-husband of uh, Reese Witherspoon. Wow. So, um, wow, you know. Suddenly we became E. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, uh, here's the here's the thing with the film. I think we were both kind of in agreement with this. We walked in with very low expectations. How do you? How are you going to take basically a one-note joke? That the, the sum total of which exists in about 16 minutes worth of very bare-bones sketches over five years, and turn that into somehow an 85-minute story. They don't really, but there's enough uh, really, really knowing humor in it, maybe 10, 15 percent of the movie, that you know you sit around bored for about five or six minutes, and then there's a really great joke, and it kind of sustains you. So it's not terrible, not particularly good, but it's passable. It, you know what? I, I agree, and it's funny. It's the type of movie where you. You went in there thinking it would be terrible, and then it winds up being okay to the point where you're disappointed it wasn't funnier. Yeah. Because there was enough funny stuff in there where you're like, I, but, I now wish this was funnier. But we had those crazy guys in front of us. But we did have those. They're very entertaining. Yeah, the, the, the story here is uh, it's basically a very, very cliched story, and it knows that it's a cliched story. And when it, when it lets you know that it knows it's a cliched story, that's when it's actually funniest. Uh, Val Kilmer plays a guy with a very, very rude name, who's the, the diabolical Bond-type villain, and he's got, a, he's got a nuclear weapon, and he's going to use it in some diabolical way, and of course, MacGruber's recruited by the government to try and stop it, puts his team together, brings on Kristen Wiig and Ryan Felipe. Um, all kind of boilerplate stuff. Uh, Powers Booth, as a government general who recruits him, that guy's got a huge melon. It's like a Lee Marvin-sized melon. It's just an enormous head. It's a good screen no, head. It's he a does. good movie head. Anyway. I, I, th I think if, if the movie were any smarter, it would have really embraced the 80s-ness of it. Now, there's a lot Which, of really funny music that's choices. That's the funny stuff. The, 80, the 80s riffs are really funny, but a lot of people aren't going to get those riffs. There's a, there's a running gag where uh, where MacGruber carries around his, his car pull, stereo. His pull-out car stereo. Because in, in the 80s, you used to, you used to pull your car stereo out people so people were, wouldn't steal it. People who are 20 years old won't get that. They won't get that. They won't get that. But there's a lot of funny music choices from the 80s. He drives a Miata. Yeah. There's uh, there's a there's a shot of Ronald Reagan on the on the general's uh, wall. Yeah. I wish they had owned that stuff more, but I feel like that that's a level of of satire that the film wasn't really trying to go for. It feels like it was trying to go for a little bit of the same spirit that we got in Team America, but Team America went all the way with it. And here they kind of pull their punches a little bit, and I think sometimes they don't really quite know how to construct a story. I mean, these are people. Will Forte was one of three writers on it. 
and uh, Seth Meyers was one of the producers. Seth Meyers, who's, of course, head writer on Saturday Night Live right now. And I think these are all people who know how to build a 30-second, a 60-second, a 4-minute, a 5-minute sketch. But when you actually have to construct a story, when the jokes have to somehow be part of a larger fabric, I think they get a little Wait, bit lost. You're, you're, you've seen Star Net Live that has been under five minutes of sketch? You know what? Actually, exist. no. I know they, it doesn't They know how exist. to beat it to death. You know, there's and actually... not be that funny. You know and why... keep it going for another five minutes. That's Saturday Night Live. You know why Eric Idle has never been invited back to host Saturday Night Live? is because he actually pointed that out. Yeah. Because Monty Python would have bits that were five seconds long. Sure. And uh, the MacGruber sketches are actually the shortest thing that's probably ever been on Saturday Night Live. I mean, they're about 60 seconds. Uh, and they can't be longer. But yeah, you're right. The one, the one thing I have to give the film credit for is that... Um, the film is, is rated R, I would think, and they really own the R. Yeah, they there's do. There's a lot of F bombs, there's well, a lot of S bombs, there's blood. He the guy <laughs> actually rips people's throats out and there's blood everywhere. You know, and you here's the thing, what, what movies do to avoid a harder rating yeah. is when you shoot somebody, there's no blood. Yeah. You shoot them, they fall. In MacGruber, Oh, there's blood everywhere. He shoots them and there's blood. And and I really and I kind of appreciated that. And, and some of the other humor, it's very adolescent, it's very juvenile, it's very, very schoolyard. But the, and I usually don't laugh at that stuff. I usually find it really irritating and really, really condescending. But the reason it's funny here is because they understand it's not funny because it's scatological. It's funny because it's, it's self-consciously juvenile in the same way that Superbad was funny. Superbad understood the reason you're laughing at it is that you're laughing at it, not with it. And they kind of get that here, at least often enough. The sketchbook bit was very funny. The sketchbook bit was funny? Very funny. There's a lot of, but again, it's... It's um, it's a funny bit that is then you have to wait about five six minutes for the next funny bit and That's so the, the movie never really develops a whole lot of momentum. Yeah, it doesn't is the issue. But again, it as a Saturday night date movie, I guess I could kind of recommend it. It'd be fine. I mean, you could do a lot if, worse. I'll tell you in the in the continuum of SNL movies, I would put that. A right now, this is just SNL movies. Yeah. This isn't comedies, but S I give it a solid B. If you like the character, if you like Will Forte, if you like Kristen Wiig, you'll have a perfectly acceptable time at the movies. I mean, it's not the best thing either of them have ever done, but it's it's acceptable. And if you're just completely blown out of your mind on ecstasy, like those guys in front of us, you'll probably love it. <laughs> and if you love eating other people's popcorn, you'll love oh, it. Oh yeah, it's and fantastic. drinking other people's drinks. <laughs> Okay, so uh, between uh, 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 Shrek, let's get this over with. That's my subtitle for it. Yeah, Shrek, okay. let's get this over with. Between Shrek, <laughs> let's get this over with. That was the and third official th that title. That was the other title. And uh, MacGruber, what would you say? Oh, Shrek. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of a... T uh, I would say Shrek, although I think I laughed more at MacGruber. I laughed probably more at MacGruber, but I was also bored more during MacGruber. You were bored. I was Because yeah. here's the thing. Here's, here's what Wade does when he gets bored. And actually, I do this too. But I think I learned this from Wade. <laughs> when Wade gets bored, he'll lean forward in his seat. Like yeah. That's how he'll watch the movie. Yeah. And then I started doing that. And now when I'm bored, I do this. In fact, I'm going to do this for the rest of the show. Is that okay, Mike? Are you saying you're bored? I'm bored doing my own show. Wow. What do you think about it? Who's boring you? Host. You or Wade? Oh, you are. how dare you? It's not right. <laughs> okay. So there you go. So there's Shrek and there's that's MacGruber. It. Now, that's why we relate, folks, is to bring you that mixed review of MacGruber. <laughs> yes. Wasn't that worth it? Wow, something? that was wow. really great. That was great. Hey, we're only on We learned that a Saturday Night Live sketch may not be the best movie. That is true. Except for like Blues Brothers. I'm Blue gonna say that was. Well, I guess Wayne's World was the last good one. Blues Brothers, Wayne's World. Hey, ladies, man. I didn't know oh, where you were going. No, no. ladies, man.